Hello, everyone. Welcome to my presentation. I'm Yu Chen Yan, and today we will introduce our work named the I Gap, uh, which can narrow down the gap between the graph pre training and fine tuning. Firstly, we will talk about the background, and secondly, we will introduce our analysis and the method, and then we will show our experimental result. At last, we will give a conclusion. Uh, graph neural networks has achieved success in many scale roles, such as social analysis, web many, and the recommendation system. Um, traditional graph neural networks are trained under the supervised manner, which not only entails large quantity of human annotations, but also may suffer from the overfitting problem. Um, inspired by the successful application of pre-training model, um, many efforts have been paid into a new paradigm named uh, pre-training and uh, fine-tuning. And this paradigm contains two stages. And the first stage is a uh, pre-training stage. In this stage, many self-supervised uh, tasks are designed to equip the graph neural networks with general knowledge. And then in the fine-tuning stage, initialized with uh, pre-training parameters, uh, the graph neural networks can be adapted to the downstream tasks with less training epochs. Uh, although the graph pre-training can equip the graph neural networks with general knowledge, there is also immense gap between the pre-training and fine-tuning. Uh, specifically, uh, uh, the graph neural networks may get used to the structure-related task in the pre-training stage. Uh, for example, they may be good at uh, predicting the graph links. Uh, however, in the fine-tuning stage, the graph neural networks have to be adapted to, uh, for example, the load classes a classification task. Mm, the gap between the pre-training and the fine-tuning may limit the performance of, of downstream tasks. Mm, and concretely, uh, the gap in the graph domain mainly have three aspects. Uh, the first one is, uh, um, is a graph signal gap. It means uh, a graph mm, signal distribution of the fine-tuning graph is different from the pre-training one. And the second one is a graph structure gap, which means a fine-tuning graph may have a different structure compared to the pre-training one. And the third one is a task gap, which means a fine-tuning object may differ from the uh, pre-training one. Uh, in order to narrow down the gap, and uh, many prompts have been proposed, uh, the main idea behind the, these prompts uh, is to transform the fine-tuning task into the pre-training form. Uh, for example, in the natural language process, the prompt mainly considers a learning object. Uh, since different tasks uh, may have a shared semantic uh, semantic space, however, uh, the situation in the graph prompt is far more complex. Um, as mentioned before, um, not only the tasks but also the graph signal and the structures are, are different. Uh, so, align the task directly will result in a transductive limitation. Uh, which requires uh, pre-training and fine-tuning on the same graph. So uh, in order to design the prompt corresponding to the graph, uh, we first analyze the pre-training process and uh, we propose our solutions. Uh, for the convenience, we first prove that the main stream graph pre-training can be unified into the uh, 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 contrastive form. Uh, whose purpose is to discriminate the uh, negative samples from the positive one. And uh, this uh, process uh, can be shown in, uh, as an info NCE loss. And uh, different graph pre-training actually have a different positive and negative samples. Uh, for example, in the link prediction task, the positive samples are the subgraph centered on the lows with masked edges, and the negative samples are the subgraph centered on the long adjacent nodes. And uh, in the subgraph contrastive task, the positive samples are the subgraphs derived from the same nodes, and the negative samples are the subgraphs centered on the different nodes. And uh, for the local global contrastive task, the positive samples are, uh, are the subgraphs with, uh, without preservation, while the negative samples are the subgraphs with uh, the shuffled feature. Uh, then we analyze the pre-training process under the contrastive laws, and we begin with the findings, uh, which is shown in the theorem. Uh, it describes a 
character of the pre-training in the spectral uh, space. It says that the pre-training process can make graph signals align more to the low-frequent spectral components than with high-frequent ones. Um, next, we will uh, give a proof. Uh, we model the structure perturbation as a vector Q, which is added to the spectral component. And we model the uh, signal perturbation as a transformation matrix. And uh, as for the positive one, the uh, Q is small and uh, may parallel with the uh, uh, spectral components. And the F is a uh, sparse matrix. And uh, as for the negative one, the Q mainly affects a uh, high frequent component and the F is a dense matrix. And the message passing process is shown uh, as a right. Then under the contrastive laws, it can be derived as the uh, upper equation where the beta is the uh, influence of the positive perturbation and we can omit it. And uh, we also tra um, transform the negative perturbation as a linear combination of spectral components and the laws can be simplified into the following form. Uh, let's uh, analyze the key parts of the laws. Uh, the lambda sp is the uh, eigenvalue of the sparse matrix and the lambda dt is the uh, singular value of the dense matrix, and we know that the lambda sp is smaller than the lambda dt. And uh, besides, uh, we know the negative perturbation mainly contains high-frequent noise, and uh, which implies that the high-frequent components may weigh more. Uh, and therefore, the key parts of the loss will increase as the frequency increase. So uh, in order to minimize the loss function, we uh, need to ensure the graph signal aligns more to the low frequent component. Uh, and next, we will introduce a method named iGap. Uh, here is a model framework. It, um, it contains uh, three parts. The first one is the graph signal alignment, and the second one is the graph structure alignment. And the third one is the task alignment. And uh, uh, we introduce a graph signal alignment first. And uh, uh, we view the gap as a perturbation. And we propose to compensate this gap by a learnable prompt. However, it will be expensive if we learn every prompt uh, for every load. So uh, we argue that the prompt matrix is actually a low rank matrix. Uh, since, uh, since, since similar loads may have uh, similar perturbated patterns. So therefore, uh, the prompt can be described as a combination of some limited prompt vectors. And then for the graph structure gap, and uh, based on the analysis of the graph pre-training pre process, uh, we can alleviate this gap by aligning the low frequent spectral space and we model the uh, process, uh, alignment process as a, as a space transformation. And the prompt is actually the transformation matrix. Uh, with uh, alignment, we have the following message passing uh, process. And uh, at last, we propose, uh, we propose a task prompt to alleviate this gap caused by the task gap. Uh, we can reformulate the fine-tuning task into the contrastive form with a learnable prompt, specifically as for the classification task. Uh, if we view the parameter of the classification head as a prompt, mm, and then the cross-entropy loss can be reformulated the, uh, as a contrastive form. And uh, finally, we can get the final optimization uh, target. And uh, next, we will show our experimental results. Uh, for the experiments, we have uh, three settings. The first one is the transductive setting, where the pre-training and fine-tuning on the same graph. And the second one is semi-inductive setting, where the fine-tuning graph are sampled from the pre-training one. And the third one is the inductive setting, where the pre-training and fine-tuning graph are different. And the data sets used in the experiments are shown in the table. And we compare with the, uh, the supervised learning baselines, uh, graph pre-training baselines, and uh, prompt learning baselines. And uh, for the load, uh, load level task, uh, we find that the first uh, iGAP can achieve competitive performance compared to other baselines. And uh, 
and the second, I gap can perform better in the semi-inductive and uh, inductive settings. Uh, and third, uh, we find that uh, pre-training and the prompt learning baselines performs better than the supervised learning methods. And uh, for the graph level task, we also have the similar observation where the eye gap can perform better in the semi-inductive and uh, inductive settings. Uh, and we conduct uh, ablation study to analyze the effect levels of uh, different parts. Uh, we find that if we have low graph structure alignment, the performance will decrease significantly. And uh, if we have low graph signal alignment, uh, the performance will also uh, decrease, but uh, uh, not as much as the stru structure prompt, uh, which may because the uh, structure prompt can compensate for the graph signal gap. And uh, uh, in our experiments, uh, task prompt uh, have a minor influence, and we think it may be because uh, uh, this gap can be compensated by the other two prompts. At last, uh, uh, let's make a recap to my <coughs> presentation. Uh, we first analyze the uh, graph pre-training process, and we find that uh, the graph pre-training can align the uh, uh, graph signal more to the low-frequent components. And uh, then we can narrow down the gap in the graph domain. And uh, for the signal gap, we use a prompt to compensate it. And uh, for the structure gap, we uh, use a space transformation to align this gap. And uh, for the task gap, we uh, reform the fine-tuning task into the contrastive form. And uh, we show the experimental result to uh, show the effectiveness of our method. And uh, that's all my presentation. Thanks for your listening.